Cannabis growers are a lot like wine growers. If you ask anybody in the wine fields, they'll tell you how much pride they take in every grape that comes off the vine and what that grape goes on to be. Cannabis growers are the same. They take a lot of pride in what goes into the dirt and what comes out of it. Jesse Horton is one of those people who takes tremendous pride in his work. Activist, entrepreneur, and true cannabis connoisseur, Jesse has turned his love of cannabis into loud. Check out our interview. Cash Color Camp is a high level of conversation. Um, today, again, we are not at Live Hip Hop Daily Studios. We are at Urban Grove Media Studios, AKA my house. And we have a dope interview today, man. With, um, as somebody who I, I've been wanting to have on the show since, literally, if y'all know my background, when I was starting to color green, I've been wanting to interview this man since about 2015, 2016. And um, I finally get a chance to, and that's um, my good friend, my guest today, Jesse Horton. Jesse, what's up with you today, man? Yo, what's good, bro, man? I'm I'm excited to be on here, man. You've been doing your thing, you know, for, for years and, um, you know, telling important stories, man. I appreciate the opportunity. No doubt. I appreciate you, man. Um, For those who don't know or who are not familiar with the show, uh, can you please just explain yourself and t- explain who you are and just tell people what you do? Yeah, my name is Jesse. I'm a, um, I'm a cannabis cultivator. Uh, I live in Portland, Oregon. I own a company called Loud. Um, but, you know, in addition to a lot of the business stuff that I do in the industry, I've been involved a lot from an advocacy standpoint um, and, you know, from a nonprofit sector trying to make sure that uh, more people of color, more black people specifically find a way to win in the cannabis industry um, through entrepreneurship, jobs, uh, tax appropriation, all that type of stuff. So um, yeah, man. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really focused hundred percent mostly on, on cultivation, but try to do as much as I can uh, with some of the other aspects, important parts for us to be involved. Yeah. Um, and speaking of the cultivation side, you know, we, we, we do know that you have an amazing brand called Loud. Um, but this is the first time that you dibbled and dabbled in the cultivation <laughs> side. Like one man, like many others have started out at home. Um, talk to us about how you, you got into the growing, how you got into growing in the first place. Yeah, man. So, man, it was, I never thought I'd be doing cannabis, bro. I, you know, I always have been a smoker. I've been smoking since I was 15. Um, but I was actually living out in Munich, Germany, um, uh, doing engineering. So I was there for about a year and a half. Just really got tired of the whole corporate thing, man, and decided to uh, try to do something a little different. And they get, offered me a sales position in Portland. So I'm like, man, I'm from the Southeast. Um, I was living in Atlanta before I was in Munich. So I didn't even know where Oregon was on the map. You know, I'm like, <laughs> Oregon, I can't. <laughs> if somebody would have told me to point it out, bro, like you would have learned my geography was, was not on point. So then they said Portland. And I was like, OK, I heard of the Blazers. OK, yeah, yeah. Portland. All right. Let me go check it out. So I went out there, um, decided to move out there um, just so I can kind of get more, you know, less corporate and ended up getting super less corporate uh, because I, as soon as I got out there, bro, within a month, I went and got my medical card. I went to the, the to the medical facility. I limped in, you know, trying to sell my little back injury or whatnot to try to get my medical card. As soon as I got it, I went out to the dispensary and grabbed a little clone and um, you know, soil and all that stuff. And I just, I pretty much never looked back, man. I started in my garage and, and then ended up expanding to like my whole basement. Like my whole house was just smelling like a forest and everything, man. It was crazy. Um, and then just kept going, bro. Just kept going. What was your first grow like? Like how did, how did your, how did your first crop turn out? You know what, man? It was actually good. It was actually good, man. Um, I, I spent so much time, bro. I was supposed to be making sales calls, right? So I was, you know, I had my own schedule. So this is like where you mess up when you get somebody their own schedule, right? You know what I mean? So they got made my own schedule, and instead of making those sales meetings, I would be sitting up in, um, in like grow shops, you know, where you get the, you get all the materials and everything, the soil and all that. And I'd just be talking to them, like, what about this? What about that? What about this? And I'd be on the blogs and all of that shit. You know what I mean? And um. You know, I it guided me really through that first crop, and I did well, man. That's really what made me think I was. I, I just thought I was the best. I'm like, oh man, I just got a gift for this shit. But you know, really, what I learned is it's mainly about um, it's about just being very detail oriented. You know, what I mean, not skipping any steps, making sure you're going just very process focused on everything. And I think if you do that, man, I mean, that's that's really the key to growing. 
Man, <laughs> that was a story. Man, um, but like I said, today I really want to get into Loud because I think that Loud is a dope brand. I think I, I love the fact that you're the face of it. Um, speak to us about launching Loud. Like what made you want to get, you, what made you want to start this brand itself? Man, it was um, it was just an evolution. Uh, when I got in, you know, I, I started a medical facility called Panacea Valley Gardens and that did well. And I had a dispensary called Panacea that I started with a few partners and, you know, that whole model was good. Um, and then I broke off from those partners um, and we sold Panacea Dispensary and I, you know, decided to kind of focus on a rebrand. And we, at first we were saints. And then we learned of a company in Washington that was, funded that was called Saints, you know, and they were focused on Saints joints at first, and then they kind of expanded. So before we launched our new brand, we had to kind of go back to the drawing board. And I'm just thinking, you know, like, what do we really want to represent? You know, who do we, you know, who are we? Uh, what, who can we be authentically? And I started thinking about, you know, the name and really about, you know, how, you know, who we need to represent, you know, in cannabis culture. So that's really how everything kind of evolved with with the brand and what we're focused on and the name and the visuals. Um, it's just my, my dope creative team. Um, but that's really the idea, bro, is just what I saw was that the industry is growing fast and it's not representing, I think, us, right? We see a lot of our, our, our intellectual capital, in a sense, kind of being used sporadically, right? And, you know, we got to own that more. So that's why, you know, we, we chose a name loud with a little bit of a difference, L-O-W-D. It's an acronym for Love Oregon Weed Daily. And, you know, I think that's another piece is that, you know, in Oregon, there's a different lifestyle and there's an evolving, you know, movement of this like urban hip hop culture and, and like us exploring and seeing new dope things with nature. So, you know, looking at all of that and kind of wanting to, you know, first make sure that we grabbed a piece of the culture and that we represented us authentically, but then also making sure we made a bridge for us to this kind of new dope lifestyle that I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of people in the urban culture are realizing. Yeah. And I think what you're doing great is curating what you said is a, is a new generation of, of, of consumers, man. Like from your visuals to your branding, it's just really on trend to what I feel like millennials and a new, and a newer generation are going to be looking towards. Um, speak to us about your creative team and how, how influential they are when it comes to creating these amazing visuals and these amazing images that make y'all look like you're, younger, faster, newer, not necessarily somebody who's kind of trying to reintroduce you to what they used to do. Right, 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 man. Um, you know, it's it's been I got a dope ass creative team, bro. You know, I, I think, you know, I'm I'm lucky in that who we're marketing to really, you know, in our demographic is in a sense me and maybe the younger me, the younger us, you know what I mean? And how we were introduced to cannabis, you know, and even even our age bracket, right? Like the low 40s. Um, is really who we want to grab. And, you know, that's all of our team. So, you know, as we're sitting around and we're talking and me being just a, a, a big stoner, a big cannabis consumer, there's a lot of ideas and, and intersections with our culture and this industry and this demographic and, and where we are in the country. So we just always are spitting out different things and different ideas. And, and my creative team um, or actually, you know, my my buddy from college, he was my roommate, one of my best friends, Oi Craddock, is one of the dopest, um, you know, visual designers that I've ever met. You know, it was funny, we were back in college and we had this kind of shotgun room, right? Where it's like, it's Oi's room, this is my buddy Carez's room and my room is here. And we'd all be sitting there doing our homework, you know what I mean? And we're passing the blunt, like, cause we all got a door to eat everybody's room. So Oid's in the back room, you know, he's in front of his computer on his Apple doing his little shit, this design. My homeboy Carez is kind of in there talking to females and doing his thing. And I'm sitting there doing math problems and we just passing the blunt back and forth the whole night. You know what I mean? So, so Oid is key. And then also my cousin, um, he's one of the dopest black ad executives in the nation, uh, Brandon Pierce. Um, him together with his creative designer, um, Pedro, called Tad Derrick. Uh, so that's my creative team. Um, we're, I'm lucky, um, really dope people um, and really dope ideas that we can just kind of have fun with and figure out how to bring them out. Yeah, man. And, and the second thing I think is really dope is the fact that we're seeing black faces in the cultivation side. You know, we often we often 
speak about, you know, the lack of people of color, the lack of black people overall in the cannabis space. But when you look at specific areas, you see even less, you know what I'm saying? And it's dope to see people like yourself, to see the, um, the Ball family, to see um, even Gas House, you know what I'm saying? To see these brands pop up right now is amazing. Um, what's it like being, a, how do you feel when as far as seeing more black cultivators come to this space? Like, there's definitely a need, but how do you feel like we could fill that need? Man, that's a good question, bro. Um, I think I think we're doing a hell of a great job now by by telling the story, by making sure that the companies that are out there, right, you're connecting people to da da da, da right, and everybody's seeing this, and that's what I thought, really, man. When we were starting uh, Minority Cannabis Business Association, the idea um, mainly was around the fact that the more we can show people being successful and people being involved in the industry the more it's going to spark, blah, 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 all these different people who are like, oh, shit, oh, shit, that's possible. So it's not really about necessarily teaching people, but it's about being that light and kind of showing those guide, guiding ways and making sure that you're opening up those, those opportunities for people to just kind of run through. So I think, I think that's what's happening now, man, is we got to make sure that we continue to tell the stories of, you know, like Ball Family Farms, like Gas House. Uh, Magic Hour Cannabis, um, Justin, uh, just incredible cultivation out in Massachusetts, um, and a lot of other people like in between, bro, that I think, you know, maybe aren't as comfortable being in front of, aren't as comfortable talking yeah. about it as we all know why, you know what I mean? Why people wouldn't be comfortable talking about their involvement in cannabis. So I think there's a lot more people out there, bro, and we just got to continue to figure out how to, how to make the connection, you know what I mean? Both visually and also you know, how can we help people to kind of get to that next step? Yeah. Um, being out in Oregon, I know you're familiar with the, you're definitely familiar with the scene when it comes to um, lack of inclusion and, and definitely racial issues. You know, you're, you're, you're in a space where, where definitely there's going to be a small group of Black people involved, but you're also in a space where you might not even be welcomed. You know what I mean? Um, speak to us about working in a state like Oregon and working in a place like Portland and what we're doing and what you're doing to try to um, even the playing fields for Black people in the space. Yeah, that's dope, man. You know what? I think that um, I think there's a little bit of a misconception about Oregon mm -hmm. or maybe even the bubble of Portland. You know what I mean? Where, um, you know, because it has been one of the whitest cities in America for a long time because of the racial history of Oregon, not even letting black people into the state. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, fuck slavery. We ain't letting <laughs> nobody in. Yeah. You know what I mean? If y'all come in, we're going to publicly lash you until you leave type of thing. So it's hurt us from getting the opportunity to kind of get roots here, right? And, and those things, and you've had all the racial issues. I mean, there's racism everywhere. It's not saying everything's great, but man, what I found in Portland, bro, is um, is a real uh, massive opportunity for, for black people and black men specifically to, um, to make a lot of economic opportunity, bro. So, I mean, I found nothing but support in the cannabis industry. And I think as, a, as an entrepreneur, you have to be really optimistic about everything. So everything I say with that is a grain of salt. Of course, I've dealt with racism here and there, da 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 right? Just we're, we're black men, you know what I mean? That's just part of our everyday living. But man, I've just found so many other doors and opportunities that I don't think were traditionally open in some of those other places that I've been that I've just seen so much to focus on with that. And one of those is, um, you know, when I came to Portland, we started MCBA and the city of Portland was really behind what we were doing. Um, even, you know, a lot of the business owners here were a big support in making sure that MCBA had the financial push and the support to get a lot of programming done that, that, that made sense. So, you know, that helped. But then once I stepped down from MCBA to focus on on cultivation, you know what I mean? And really focus on business. I, I wanted to still attach to that. So. We started the New Leaf Project um, here in Portland, Oregon with my wife. And that's just been dope, man. Like, I mean, I, like that shit has shown the city of Portland. We have a partnership with them where they give us a portion of the cannabis tax um, in order to give out directly in 0% interest loans and, um, and also uh, grants. Uh, we did a lot of COVID relief grants for, for black and brown cannabis businesses in, in the city. Um, you know, right now uh, we're working with different businesses. We're expanding that to Colorado. Right now we're crossing over to $1 million mark in grants and 0% interest loans that we've given out. We'll cross over that this year. So, um, man, I, I would say with that, uh, you know, there's going to be hurdles for us anywhere. But honestly, I see I see Portland as like the new black Mecca, bro. You know what I mean? I know it's hard for you to say in Atlanta. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah, really? Okay. You just say. 
Right. I'm telling you, man, it's, it's fucking amazing, bro. I'm loving it out here. If you look at like Travis Scott recently, he was like, well, it was like maybe like a couple of years ago where he, t- he um, was on Twitter and he was like, you know, where do you know, people ask me, where do I go to find happiness? And he said, Portland, you know what I mean? Like there is a lot of shit out here for us. And uh, I think we're trying to grab that um, and bring it out, both in that culture and bridging that gap to kind of this this Yeezy, Wyoming, Oregon type way of living, but also in making sure that, you know, we're lifting as we climb and working with different partners to help do that. So we're working with businesses. We have a jobs board out here. We're working with really dope big companies and small companies. Um, And we're also uh, just doing the grants and, you know, the general small business assistance. So just growing that shit, man. And my wife, uh, Jeanette, um, Jeanette Ward Horton, uh, she's killing it. She's really leading that, man. So um, it's some really dope work. Yeah, yeah. Salute both of y'all, man. Um, So let's get back to the lab. What are we growing right now? Like, so if I if I was had a chance to take a to take a tour, what do I be introduced to? So, man, here at Loud, bro, we um we're focused one hundred percent on on hunting genetics. You know what I mean? We don't really grow clones that other people have. Um, we try to find you know our unique genetics, a little bit of crossing, but mostly just hunting dope phenotypes and then bringing that to market and growing them just at at that peak performance. You know what I mean? So. Here uh, right now was doing really well. And what I'm, I'm smoking on now is 503 Wi-Fi, bro. This is a strain we've been growing for 10 years. And if you talk to a real, you're a real smoker. Tell me a strain that if you could smoke every day, you're like, man, I'm straight. I don't even want to see that shit. You know what I mean? Most strains, almost every strain. And this is one where I don't get that feeling just because it's just that great daytime balance, like motivating type of high with like an OG profile to it, which is more like a connoisseur's type of flavor uh, that I just can't get away from. But also we're growing like a curated menu of all the dopest flavors. Like we got the GMO. So we got the platinum garlic cookies. That's a cross of um, platinum Girl Scout cookies and, and garlic cookies. We've got um, cake mints. That shit is killing. You know what I mean? That's more of that dessert type of uh, doughy, gassy type of flame. It's a cross of Cushman's 11, which has been killing it, and um, and uh, and uh, Wedding Cake, Wedding Cake F3. So it's a really deep cross wedding cake. And then also, if I can name another one that I'm, I'm really digging on right now and that's doing well in the market, I would say Jungle Mac. Jungle Mac has really been like flying. Uh, we can't keep it on the shelves. And it's a cross of, of Wi-Fi and, and Mac 1, which is a legendary strain. So um, it just has really great aesthetic. Um, people really are, are loving the effects. But um, in general, man, I like guess like when you look at our menu, bro, it's like I spent two years, bro, like in the market without even launching a brand because I wanted to make sure that when we launched our brand, we were really adding something, you know, that we really curated our menu. So if you look at our menu on our website, loud.com, L-O-W-D.com, um, or at the loud, if you look at our menu, bro, you got the all the different profiles, the Purple Punch-esque profiles, you know, you got the the funk profiles, you got the gas, the heavy deep gas, you've got, um, you've got the GMOs, you've got the OGs, you've got, you know, really about 10 to 12 that we rotate through that we think are really representative, our best representation of those specific profiles. Man, it's like listening to a sommelier discuss wine. <laughs> I love this shit, man. I love clearly, it, man. I love clearly, clearly, yeah. and the excitement in his voice. You can clearly talk about this all day, all day, bro. We can talk for about. It. I'm like, man, he only giving me thirty minutes to talk about weed. Man, he's gonna have to <laughs> shut me up. Man, we got to get you down to the studio, man, so we can talk about weed even longer with you, man. Let's do it, man, for sure. For bro, sure. what I do love is that um, I I really love the fact that you and your wife are really creating a vibe of the most sophisticated productive stoners you know what i mean like you're really you're really you're really counter you're really being the uh, the the counter to everything that was being stacked against us as far as the stigma of being a stoner man what's it like accepting that accepting that mantle as well like like y'all two are definitely role models out here bro man i think both of us have just felt it most of our lives my wife honestly that's the only person i know that smokes more than me and gets more done than me so it's like that's a constant motivation. Um, you know, ever since we've known each other, we, we would sit down and, you know, we were doing a lot of work with MCBA and lock ourselves in a room and just smoke for like four hours with just, you know, whiteboards everywhere and all that type of stuff is mapping shit out. So, I mean, that's, it's kind of just ingrained in who we are. And with the idea that 
you know, I was an engineer and I was in that whole world and corporate engineering and, you know, me trying to sneak out and smoke my joint and being afraid, you know, afraid that somebody would know. Um, you know, I, that, that us, we're proud to do it, man. That's part of who we are is kind of now we get a chance to be who we are, be stoners and also not get judged and still get shit done, man. So that's also a part of the brand with, with Loud is that we want to bring, still be very close to cannabis culture, um, but do so in a way that just is killing it in all areas, you know, our website, our visuals, our designs, our packaging, our, um, you know, the way we talk about the brand, our partnerships are coming up this year. That's going to just blow people out of the water with the things that we're doing. So, you know, that's how we look at it there is we want to be hard stoners, but we also want to get more business shit done than any other company out there, man. So that's just who we are, bro. So we're, it's part of the reason why we love doing this shit. Yeah, this has been a great day, man. I, I was recently, I just like probably like 20 minutes ago was speaking with Morris Kelly from SF Roots. And um, he was giving me just some inspiring, inspiring words, man. That's a, that's a very amazing brother when it comes to um, just some of the advice he gave, gave for people trying to transition from the legacy side to the recreational side. And um, I look at you as the same kind of man. Like, what, what advice would you give to somebody who's listening to this show who aspires to go from the legacy market to the recreational market and is seeing somebody like yourself um, be, be a celebrated grower? Like, what kind, of, what kind of advice would you give to that person? Yeah, man. Um, shit, man. There's a lot of things I would like to say about that type of stuff that I probably shouldn't say. But what I will say is that Almost every successful cannabis company that I know um, that really is a real cannabis company that we would go and shop with and that we feel like are really holding the mantle, but are also super successful. Even some that you don't know that you think are were founded in Canada. You know what I mean? You think all of these, we don't even know these such big, huge companies, billion dollar companies were all started in the legacy market, bro. You know what I mean? On the West Coast, it was all people stacking money. You know what I mean? And then they were able to get this facility and then they were able to make that move. And then they were grinders, just like, you know, people are, you can be stoner and a grinder and they got shit done out of the legacy market. So, you know, unfortunately, I think that is, it has been the biggest likelihood for people to even have a chance, you know what I mean? In this market where you're not doing anything illegal necessarily, maybe you're in the gray area, but you were able to do that to become legit. So I would I would advise everybody to do that, you know, what I mean, to, to utilize that knowledge that you have, maybe that additional cash that you might have that three, five thousand dollars that other people don't have the ten thousand dollars and use that shit to make a move. You know what I mean? And then build on that shit. You know, what I mean, use that and then launch on that shit. Man, I think that's the only way that you can do it. And I think you have the advantage if you're in that market to make that move because you understand the market and you might have a little extra cash to put into that branding or to put into whatever it may be, may be that you needed to do. So I think you got to make that move. I think you need to watch and make sure you're partnering with the right people. If I didn't join with all the people to help me build MCBA, there's no way I would be here. If I didn't join with all the other people who just, you know, weren't involved with MCBA, but just helped me, there's no way I would be here. If I wasn't involved with the, the rules and the regulations and knowing all the different avenues, there's no way I would be here because I wanted to be a dispensary owner at first. You know what I mean? That's what I wanted to do. I think that's what you'll hear from most successful people in the industry. You got to have that grind, but usually what you think may be your way in ain't your way in. You know what I mean? That's kind of the universe that's showing you, you know, what moves to make. So you got to be water in how you're approaching that shit. But then at the same time, you got to know what you need to know and then understand that when you know it, you'll get that understanding of how to get in. You know what I mean? What's that best way? But you won't know it without applying that knowledge, that street smarts, that couple extra bucks that you can get, maybe raised from family like I did, um, and make that move and then identify how you can then, you know, make the next move uh, in the industry. Because the last thing, or, you know, I don't know where you're going, but the last thing I want to make sure that I say is that, you know, in this industry, you'll see a lot of people that are focused on being, you know, either the tortoise or the hare. You know what I mean? In this industry, you're really, you almost got a flame under your ass to be the hare because if you don't move fast, then you're going to lose that opportunity, it feels, right? Because there's so many fucking opportunities that it's like, wow, this, that, this, that. And if you don't go hard, you're going to lose it. But, you know, the people that I've seen be more successful have been the people who have taken more of that tortoise type of approach. 
And that, you know, I don't need to talk about it. I don't need to get it out there. Let me just work on this work. Let me understand what this move is. Let me do all these things that nobody's going to really see that are really going to be the difference to me gaining that opportunity and that leg up. A lot of the things that people do, you're not going to see. You know what I mean? A lot of people, a lot of shit that you've done to keep this shit going <laughs> for this amount of time with the level of guests that you've had and all that shit, a lot, most people don't see it. They're not going to see it. They're not going to see it on your Instagram. They're not going to hear it when you talk about it. They're not going to hear it on this podcast. It's just going to be shit that you're going to be handling and doing. And that's what everybody has to have that focus of, you know, it's going to take me, what, you say 2015? Yeah. It's going to take me fucking six years to build this shit the way that I really want. Most It's hard, man. It's hard to think about that if you're only focused on that end goal. But if you're focused on the work, then you're going to get to that six years and you're going to have something that most people can't can't emulate you know what i mean because they just don't see all the work you put in so i would always say apply that knowledge and that advantage and put in the work and there's plenty of opportunities man but be water yeah jesse appreciate that amazing ted talk you gave us right now man um, <laughs> before we get out of here let people know how they can find out more about the lab about loud um, i know you mentioned the website i'd love for people to just kind of get involved in this and make sure they follow y'all and make sure they support this amazing brand that you have Hey, would, okay, I'm sorry. Did yeah. You hear me? yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I, I heard you. Yeah. So um, so first it's loud, it's not the our Instagram. The dude who owns loud, like this dude won't give it up, man. I don't <laughs> I, I don't know why. Like I've offered this dude all kind of shit, man. Like if you know him, if you know loud at loud, please just tell the dude, let me get it. Well, you know what I mean? So we're at the loud. The company's name is loud, loud.com is how you find us. L-O-W-D. You can find me at Jesse Horton, J-E-S-C-E. Um, uh, yeah, man, that's how you can get us. Jesse, man, I really appreciate this time today, man. I swear we're going to get you in Atlanta. We're going to have a way longer conversation than this. I appreciate it, man. I'm looking forward to it, bro. No doubt. I appreciate your time. And that's Cash Color Cannabis. We out. Appreciate you. Yep. Yep. Thank you for watching. I am Mecca King, and this is Cash Color Cannabis Presents.